Easy. Down the bend. Today you join me having far too much fun in a Jaguar XJS. Although it's a bank holiday and I'm about to encounter traffic, so there are limits to that enjoyment. Firstly, I need to point out this is not my XJS. This car belongs to Kelsey Media. Um, I've borrowed it while I'm editing Classic Jaguar magazine because I can't afford a Jaguar of my own at the moment. It has to be said, I'm liking this car a lot. I've done about 600 miles in it so far and yeah, it's a really nice car. What, what impresses me most is I'm managing to average, according to the computer, about 23, 24 mpg. This car has the 4 litre version of Jaguar's AJ6 engine, a um, new engine they developed in the 1980s. And it's about 230 brake horse, I think, somewhere in that region. It's not a vast amount of power, and it's certainly not enough to brake traction in the dry. But it's enough for you to get a bit of a shift on. This car has been featured in Classics Monthly, where there's been lots of work going on. And it was also a uh, front cover star in Jaguar World Monthly earlier this year. There, the editor, Paul Walton, was complaining that the steering was light and not very good. And I'm pleased to report that it's had a reconditioned steering rack fitted. And I think it steers fantastically. The steering's very nicely weighted now. What's quite remarkable is this car has now covered 188,376 miles. And yes, it has needed work. There's been a lot of bushes replaced and various overhauls of the brakes and everything. But it still feels tight. I mean, there's not a lot of rattling going on in here. There's a fair bit of wind noise at higher speeds from the seals. It's got um, frameless windows. So it relies on a good seal around here, and to be honest, the seal isn't that good. So you get a fair bit of um, buffeting noise at speed. As we said, the air conditioning isn't dreadfully effective either. I'm keeping the windows up while I'm talking to you. I'm quite warm, but I suspect that just needs regassing or something. That's what they always claim on eBay, isn't it? Though last weekend I was at Prescott Hill Plum and I took this car up the hill twice. And, um, yeah, that wasn't driving economically. Very enjoyable, though. I don't think I got this car anywhere near its limits. It does have prodigious grip. But it's not my car. I really didn't want to bin it. And bear in mind, the only car I've driven up Prescott Hill Climb previously is my Citroen 2 CV. I love the gearbox, even though I don't like the selector. It's got a really spindly, horrible selector. It's not very nice to use. Given that Jaguar had its fabled J-Gate system available on the XJ6, it's annoying that it isn't here as standard. But the gearbox, which I believe is a ZF unit, um, has got a sport mode, which I demonstrated at the start of this video, and that works very well. It's a proper Jekyll and Hyde gearbox. So in sport mode, it's very responsive, very keen to rev. If it's not in sport mode, it will not rev. It will just use the torque of the engine, which makes it very relaxing. I've driven BMW automatics, and even when they're not in sport mode, they're too keen to kick down, and it just drives you mad. This is really good for wafting, and it's really good for going quickly as well. You can hold it in second and third. You can't hold it in first, unfortunately, which was a bit of a problem on the hill climb. I mean, it, it does feel like a bit of a 70s GT, which is what it is. When this car was built, uh, the XGS had been in production for 17 years. It's quite remarkable that the XGS actually got better during its production run. Uh, that was largely thanks to Ford getting involved. And they carried out the facelift on this one. It's got the black rear lights and the slightly different side window profile of a first facelift car. And also wipers that park on the left-hand side, which isn't ideal because they bring the water over to this side of the windscreen and then the water runs up the windscreen. But there are certainly worse ways to travel. The ride is perhaps a bit firm, it's not XJ comfortable, 
And the remarkable thing about the XJ is the XJ still handles really well. You wonder how on earth that's possible. I had hoped to do some video of going up Prescott Hill Climb, but I didn't have the right camera mount with me. They won't let you run a camera mount that's only got one sucker. I'm not using my mobile phone to record this, I'm actually using my Panasonic Lumix TZ70 camera on a free sucker mount. If I'd had this with me last week, I could have done a hill run with it. Oh well, you live and learn. I'm having my final drive in the Kelsey Media Jaguar XJS now, it goes back today. And I think actually I'm going to miss this car quite a lot for just effortlessly wafting around it. It really is quite the machine. And with the mileage, um, it's now up to 189 and a half thousand miles. This is probably a car you could pick up for three or four grand. It's gonna be on the market fairly soon, so um, we'll see exactly what it fetches. And it seems a very competent car for the money. It's been eating up the miles perfectly. In total, uh, I'll just check the onboard computer, I've now covered 1,818 miles since I picked this car up uh, a couple of months ago. It really is a very good chance to test the car because you can drive, you know, for a couple of hours and get a reasonable impression of what a car's like, but covering over 1,800 miles, that really does give you a, a darn good test. I have discovered it is rubbish at off-roading. Um, I got it stuck in the field where the RAV4 towing a caravan triumphed. This just sank and got very stuck and that was a very stupid thing of me to do. I did manage to get it out, thankfully, on my own. Um, it, it's very good at wafting along on motorways. Um, Economy-wise, the computer is reckoning 23.9. The best tank-to-tank -tank calculation I've done in my ownership is 26. And that, that's not necessarily hanging about, so I'm quite impressed with that. I mean, it is a massively long car, but it's not massively wide, so it's not too bad to drive around the hills of Wales. But the length makes it a bit of a sod to park. And despite this great length, the rear seat is completely unusable. At least my Prelude, which also had a useless rear seat, was a fairly short car by comparison. But you'll be able to read my full report on this car in the... Um, issue of Classic Jaguar magazine that's coming out towards the end of August. August 19th we're on sale and there will be a full seven page feature on this car including my visit to Autoglim. Uh, it's nice to see that Autoglim really is a very British company still uh, making their products on site and even doing research and development on site. So that was a very useful visit thanks for that Autoglim. Uh, so yeah I, I've We'll have to say goodbye to the silky smooth six cylinder engine, even if you do need to press sport mode to get the best out of it. Uh, bye bye Jaguar, and we'll, we'll see what's going to join the fleet next. You never quite know what's going to pop up. Thank you for watching, don't forget to subscribe as ever, and I shall see you next time. Goodbye.